the sort of main focuses for the use of technology in college, and I don't know how clearly you can see them from the back there, but they were about using interactive tools for assessment and feedback in sessions. And feedback could just be like <coughs> the questions that we were asking before on the text wall, but I'll talk about some of the tools that we've been using for that. Um, using technology to provide feedback to learners, so that's something that they're taking away with them maybe, rather than maybe than written, handwritten comments on an assignment. And then finally, the use of vodcasts or video demonstrations to enable a concept called the flipped classroom. Have many of you heard of that? Yeah. So, um, so really it's about making sure that the time the learners are with the expert in the room, that can be a really rich learning experience that the learners are actively involved in, rather than the tutor spending time demonstrating something to the class at that point. So that's been our main focus. Um, by bringing technology in, this is just a, an example from one curriculum area, and this was catering. Um, we, we, back about probably about four, maybe five years ago, in, in the catering department, learners were not allowed to have their phones out at all, and it was a constant battle with them. Put your mobile phones away, which I'm sure is something that you've all, all um, had in your own institutions. Um, but they noticed that any chance to use their phones, the learners got quite engaged, and they were really struggling to embed things like um, literacy and numeracy into the curriculum. The learners loved doing the practical work, but not any of the theory-related work. Um, I'll talk about more what they did in a minute, but by actually allowing the learners to use their own devices or some of the college ones, they saw their succession rates go from 63% to 97%. So that was one area where we really found if we got the learners engaged using technology, it made a huge difference. Um, we recently had um, an Eston inspection, so Eston are Her Majesty's Inspectorates in Wales, um, so similar to Ofsted in England, I don't know if you have is it a different organisation in Northern Ireland. Yeah, um, so they came in um, last June, it was actually, um, and did a work-based learning inspection. And I've just put up some of the key things that they saw in sessions. And they saw mobile phones being used, instant assessment and feedback, because the way we were using technology. And they mentioned things like the QR codes um, and podcasts and flip classroom. So most of the rest of my presentation is based around some of the things that they really may have seen when they were with us. So how did we go about it? The big thing for us was how do we get the learners to know that they can use mobile devices when they're in college and how do we make sure they've got the right sort of apps and things available on their devices. So what we first of all had was something, at the time we were Yale College still at that point, so we had a Connect Yale, it's now Connect Cambria, and we have posters up at the beginning of the year, and we have road shows in the canteens, reception areas, and we help the learners get their devices onto the college wireless network to begin with. Then we um, suggest a list of apps that we think would be useful for them to use, um, which you can see just down here. Um, I'll go into that in a bit more detail later. And um, one of those things is a QR code reader, because we really sort of thought that if learners could have a QR code reader on their devices, that then enabled us to give them easier access to lots of other types of information and resources. We also weren't really too sure what sort of apps would be useful ourselves because we were learning with the learners on this. So we came across something called the Pedagogy Wheel. Has anybody seen this? Yeah. And we just found it a really useful tool. So there's a, everything in my presentation and all the um, interactive slides and um, posters and things we're going to use later will be available online on the RSC um, Northern Ireland website. And this, there's a link to this as well. And what it does this, it's based on Bloom's taxonomy, for those of you who haven't seen it. So if I want um, to have an activity where I'm getting my learners to create, then what I can do is look at what the action verbs for create are. Has this got a link? Yeah, how's it go? So the action verbs for creating, and then it suggests apps that would be useful to help me do that with my, my learners on mobile devices. And it's called the pedagogy wheel rather than pedagogy, because it's on iPads. So these are all apps for iPads, because our staff in college pulled me up on that straight away and I said, no, no, there's a reason for it. But that was a really useful tool to go to. And also, if you click on um, any of these items here, it takes you straight to the page to download the app from as well. Um, so from that, we came up with our own list of apps that we thought would be useful generally in college, this is in your packs, um, to have on devices. And what we've done, I'm just going to move that around there, is we split it up so that um, we've got the apps listed down here, and then we've broken it down by type of platform so the learner can see straight away by looking at the sheet whether that particular app is going to work on their device or not. Um, so we've got Adobe Reader because we encourage um, worksheets, PowerPoint presentations to be changed into PDF files because it doesn't matter what device you're accessing it on then. Either the computer it will work or on your mobile device. But also um, we've, we look at things like a QR code reader. So we're looking 
there's Erasmus, which is one of the augmented reality apps that you can use. And then Nearpod and Socrative are two of the assessment tools that we use. So a little bit like Kahoot that we used this morning. And Facebook and Twitter, because we use that as a way of communicating with learners in college. And then, oops, I keep clicking too much. From there, we then started to develop um, either subject-related versions of these. So this one's for motor vehicle plumbing and electrical installation. So you've got things like circuit trees, um, measurement tools, risk assessment, health and safety, but also tools for particular things. So if I'm doing videos, um, podcast, the flip classroom, the item at the top there, if I want things where I'm giving feedback to learners, I've got this sheet at the bottom. So we've just sort of taken that concept and developed it further. We also have a Google community. Um, Kay was talking about these this morning. And um, we've got lots of Google communities in college. We've got some that are for particular curriculum areas, but we've also got a technology apps and resources one for staff. So when we find an app that we think could be useful or some information about a new tool, online tool, it gets added into here. I think we've got about 200 members in there now. It's, it's growing all the time. And again, we've broken things down by iPhone, iPad, Android, um, multiple devices. So we're finding that's quite useful. And what's nice about Google communities is as well as putting the link to the information, there's an area here where you can have a discussion based on it. So it's a little bit like a private Facebook um, area. So I've just popped there some more useful links to places that you can find more information on apps that you might want to use for education on mobile devices. And the Paul's e-learning resources um, links through to things that are just iOS or Apple based. So it's well worth having a look at that. Okay, so what did we do? So as well as um, getting the learners interested in actually connecting their devices and, and having the QR codes that I mentioned before, um, what we also then looked at was the idea of the flip classroom and video demonstrations. And what we've done here is it actually started off in catering, um, which is why we've got an iBook example up here. And they began by um, recording videos of demonstrations that were done in the kitchens. And then they actually had quite a neat little tool that let them um, sync, I think it was something like 16 iPod touches together could all get sent that same video. So we weren't really using the cloud and online storage spaces to share things at this point. But the iPod touches were used and the learners were able to, in their um, sessions where they worked in the restaurant and the kitchen, because quite often that work might take place in the evenings or at weekends. In the past, they paid the students, but instead what they enabled them to do if they were working outside of hours was earn points to get an iPod touch. So that was really, really um, um, popular scheme that we set up with the learners there. Um, so that was, that was one way. And then we started to look at other ways that we could make the resources available. And this poster in the middle here, again, this is all video demonstrations, um, it actually does three different things. Do you, does anybody recognise the little purple layer at the bottom there? Yeah? So that's Erasmus, so that's a virtu um, an augmented reality app. And if I open that app on my device and scan the picture, the picture will come to life and play the video demonstration of that part of the process that the learner's learning there. Um, they can get to exactly the same video by using a QR code. So what we do is we take the video recordings, <coughs> upload them onto YouTube as an unlisted um, video so that you have to know the address to get to it, you can't search for it. And then um, just change that into a QR code so the learners who haven't got Erasmus, because Erasmus only works on Apple devices and some Android, so we are excluding some of our learners there. But pretty much any learner who's got a smartphone can have a QR code reader that they can download. So we can um, scan the, the, the same code there to get that same video clip. And then what we wanted to make sure, that this is more recently, because originally we were just blown away by Erasmus, thought it was brilliant, I thought we'll have lots of posts with Erasmus. We realised, as I said, we, we were excluding some of our learners, so we went for the QR code readers. But I think only about 80% of our learners have got a smartphone in class. Um, and what we want to, and we do have the equipment that we can take in if we need to, but what we wanted to enable was maybe learners who'd only be accessing resources from a computer or maybe from home on a computer could still access that device. So all we've done here is just put the same little link to the um, YouTube link underneath there so a learner can have that page on Moodle, click on it and still access the same resource. Um, so, so that's sort of what we've done in relation to the flipped classroom. Um, this again is, is looking at the catering area. As I said, these were the first people who started to embed um, the use of mobile technology. And actually the first thing they did, it was the food costing poster that you can see here. This was the first time they let learners get their phones out and use them. 
and there's a formula down here, you can't see them too well, which is showing my learners, when, once we've um, put a dish together, we write down the ingredients and then they needed to go and find the prices of the ingredients to work out the profit margin. So down here is the formula for profit margin and that all the tutor did was scan, um, scan some like Tesco's, Asda and Sainsbury supermarket QR code for each of those sites and let the learners use those to look up what the price of the actual product would be. And it just engaged them in the numeracy activity, whereas if you'd have given them a hang sheet, a worksheet and just said, work out this profit margin based on these items, they might not have been quite so engaged. And from there, they thought, yeah, it is good to let them use their phones. And that's when they started doing the video demonstrations and things there. We've also used similar tools to embed literacy, but also Welsh. So in um, Wales, where all our learners are expected to try and develop their Welsh skills while they're at college as well. So we've tried to use technology as a fun way to do that. Um, in relation to literacy, um, this is an example from um, Motor Vehicle, and it's a blog. So it's a blog using Blogger. So Google Apps for Education also has... Um, blogger as part of the suite of tools so every single learner with their google accounts got their email their google drive where they can work collaborative on documents they've got google plus and community sites also blogger and their own youtube channel and so it's all as soon as they log onto the chromebooks they've got access to all of that and if they download those apps onto their phones they've got them a motor vehicle have used this for work experience diaries so they've got the learners to while they're out one day a week in a particular garage, take photographs of the work that they've been doing, write about it a bit, and traditionally these learners don't like writing, you know, no written work, but because they're used to doing that kind of thing on their phones maybe and sharing pictures previously, they seem to just engage with this technology really, really well. And you found most of the time that you know, rather than going to the computer to pop things on, they were doing it on their phones. And then the tutors were able to pick up on um, maybe literacy errors discreetly with the learners afterwards and say, you know, oh, you know, it might have been when you were typing, but just be a little bit more careful, proofread things. Um, so that, that's worked really, really well. And we're also using it for um, almost like a, as an e-portfolio in some um, curriculum areas as well for their qualifications. And it just puts the, it's getting the learners in the centre of the doing, isn't it? It's giving them a place to actually showcase their work. In relation to using technology to enable access to um, other areas that we have to embed, so it's literacy and numeracy in Welsh, we have um, oh, sorry, we have here um, posters that we have up in each of the classrooms with the key terms in English and Welsh for each subject area. And what we thought would be a great idea was to get Erasmus, the app, to recognise those posters if the learners scanned over them and then gave the learners a choice of things that they could actually go and do. So in this instance, we linked it in with Moodle. So each of our Moodle pages down here has um, some imagery about the area, which usually includes some student work. And again, um, there's usually a Welsh context in here because that was, that was really important. The list of apps for that particular subject, and if you click on the links, it takes you through to the... Um, relevant sites, so be it um, Play Store or um, App Store, and then some interactive quizzes. This is just a little tool called Quizlet, which lets you take a key term, match it to a definition, and produce all sorts of little activities. So we thought that was a really good way of getting the learners to learn and um, those sort of practice those key terms there. So other things that we've used for instant um, assessment and feedback, we have an EILP, Individual Learning Plan, um, and our, our EILP is called ATEB, and that works both on the computers um, and on mobile devices as well, and it's just for target setting. So it's make a place where the learners can record during a session if they get some feedback or at the end of the session what it is they need to do next to help them with their learning. I think there's loads of different um, EILP tools around. This is the one that we used. Um, we also use BKSB, which is a tool for um, screening, uh, a sort of a literacy and numeracy diagnostic tool, so you can see exactly what level your learners are at, but it also has materials that they can work through to help them develop their skills, so they'll just see things that are related to the areas that they need to improve on. So using those two things together, it was initially what we did. We got the learners to record what was it that they needed to do to improve their literacy and numeracy as one of their targets, and then more subject-related ones after that. Um, we, there's some more examples I'll be showing you through here. We use Google Communities, which I, I showed you before, as a place where maybe um, either the tutors can put examples of the work the learners have done, or learners can, and there's a place where you can have peer, peer assessment and feedback there. And um, so that's working quite well. This little tool down here, does anybody mm -hmm. recognise that one? It's a bit, it looks a bit, it looks 
a bit like a play button just to, it's actually a video analysis tool so I'll show you some examples but that's it's here so this example here we can record the learners um, undertaking a task on the left annotate it and send the picture of what, it, um, what we were talking to them about there and the way that we're going to improve their um, practical skills or you can put the model way of doing it on the right hand side and the learner can see the two side by side and that can be emailed as feedback as well and then we've used Nearpod. Has anybody used Nearpod or come across that? No? Nearpod, um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it when I get to that slide, but yeah, it's, it's a bit like the um, Kahoot we used before, and so is Socrative. But all these things were to improve feedback both from the learners during sessions, so how much do they understand, and to them. So that's our appetite, I'll just move it, that's in Nearpod. It's a little bit like a mixture between Quizdom voting systems, if you, if you come across that, or a bit like the voting system on who wants to be a millionaire, and a PowerPoint presentation. So you can take your standard slides uh, um, as part of your delivery, um, but inside uh, or alongside them, you can add in polls so you can get opinions back from your learners, um, open ended questions, quizzes like multiple choice quizzes, um, play videos, take them off to a web page, or do something called a draw it where you get them to label a diagram or circle around things. And um, what happens is that the tutor logs on, usually with a mo mobile device, they can wander around the room. Um, the learners all access Nearpod either from an app on their phone or tablet device, but you can also uh, um, access it via a Chromebook or any device that's connected to the internet, really. And the first thing they get is a registration page. The tutor straight away has got everybody's names, so a little bit like we did with Kahoot. But then as the learners answer each of these different types of questions, that information is coming straight back to the tutor's view. So the tutor can see exactly who's got things right and wrong. Um, it means that if you've got maybe doing something like a revision session, you might ask a couple of questions. Everyone in the class is absolutely fine with that, so you can skip the next four slides. You, you know every, what every single person in your group is, um, or, or how much they're understanding during a session. And you can share answers as well, but it's done anonymously. So it's a brilliant way of engaging learners who maybe won't normally answer a question in class and encouraging them to have a go in what feels like a safe environment. And only they and you as the tutor know it was their particular answer. And what some staff have done really effectively here is um, ask a question, oh, sorry, ask a question such as an open-ended question, and then picked one of the weakest learners' answers who've given a good answer. That learner knows it's their answer that you shared with the rest of the group, but the rest of the group don't know it's theirs, and it's a great way of sort of building their confidence. So that's worked really effectively. And everything's saved in a report at the end. So it is free to use Nearpod um, for a certain number of presentations, but then you have to buy or subscribe to an account after that. But we've probably got about 60 people using that in college now, quite effectively. Um, video analysis and coaching, and uh, this is what I was talking about before, where we're recording um, what the learner's doing and then giving them feedback. So in this example, the learner's being shown on the left, you were holding um, the wood there, if it, you've held it with a bit of pressure on your elbow and changed the position of your finger, it would be a much more secure way of performing that activity. And that's one of the richest ways that a learner can sort of take that feedback away and remember it. In the past, we would have just said, oh no, you need to do it like this, and, and perhaps show the learner. But here, that is then emailed to them, and they've got a permanent record of that and can reflect back. I think I've not used um, explain everything yet, and I think somebody mentioned it before, I can't remember who, but that would actually let you do voice feedback on top of that as well, so you, um, that could be played back for the learner. The example at the bottom, I apologise, it's not very clear from the back, this is our equine um, area, and they record the learners now in practical sessions and then give, let them view the feedback afterwards because they can't have the, say there's 10 learners in the class, after one learner's done a ride, they can't have the other nine waiting while they give that particular person feedback. So they found this brilliant, and what they do is um, at the end of the session with the learners, they view the videos back. You can view them in slow motion as well, so you can see exactly what it is that you were doing incorrectly or, or correctly in this example in the preparation for going over a jump. Um, and again, you can annotate on that if you want to too. But alongside that, as well as the slow motion <laughs> versions, the videos are then uploaded to Google Plus. So every learner ha as part of their Google account has their own Google Plus account. And then the tutors ask the learners, how well did you think you were doing on this? They can type underneath a little bit of self-assessment and then the tutors can give them feedback. Or if a, a group are comfortable, they might upload it to the Google community as well, which is a bit like a private classroom, but it's not always appropriate to give open um, feedback 
to everybody in the group on a particular learner's um, performance. This is an example of the Google community. So in Heron Beauty, on this page, they um, photograph their um, clients before, during and after a consultation and they're uploaded straight away in the session. So one person in class is tasked with taking photos and uploading them to the community for afterwards. And then the learners have got the opportunity to sort of feedback, comment on things. We've also done a similar thing to this, but using Facebook within work-based learning. A lot of the learners were already um, engaged in using Facebook, the tutor notice. It's another example of where the tutor said, right, we might as well just use the technology because the learners want to anyway, rather than me trying to tell people off for using it all the time. So he set up a Facebook group, and his learners um, are only in college one day a week. So the other four days, they're taking pictures of examples of jobs that they're doing. So the day that they are in college, they can all view the page together, have a discussion around that, and they're getting a much richer learning experience of things that they might not normally have seen. And also, they might ask questions. So sometimes when Steve, the tutor, is teaching in the day, he'll notice on Facebook that one of the learners has said, oh, I've come across this problem. I'm not too sure how to um, do this, Steve. And then Steve, at some point, will reply back to him and say, well, maybe try this. So that's worked really well, too. Um, and then what we've tended to find with communities is that the learners have started to take more ownership of that. So initially here, um, this particular tutor in floristry was doing all her video demonstrations were going straight up into the Google community for the learners to access afterwards. And, then the, and she started to take photographs of the learners' work. But then following that, the learners started to take more of a responsibility for that. So they'll just take photographs during the session and upload those examples. So that's worked really effectively there. And it's a permanent record because in floristry, you do the display, it dies after a week and you haven't sort of got a permanent record of that. Okay, and then here I've just got a few quotes about um, things that um, the learners have said really on this um, on the use of technology in college which you can look at afterwards. I've got some examples for you to have a go of as well in a minute. So just coming back to the tool set, so the tools that we're using for assessment um, we've got Google Drive, so I, I, I would say that quite quickly, but within Google Drive, it's a bit like Office 365, I think, if you use that instead. So you've got a word processor, spreadsheet package, presentation tool, you've got forms where you can ask questions. I think you talked about the spreadsheet this morning, yeah. And you can share a document with either one person, well, you can have it on your own, or you can share it with a tutor, you can share it with a group of learners and get some people to work collaboratively. So that's worked really, really well for us. Um, and giving rich feedback there. Google Plus is what we were looking at a minute ago with the video clips, but also Google, and that's from the assessment side of things, but also with Google Plus, um, the learners can and staff can suggest websites that would be useful and helpful on the courses, put reminders for learners about maybe revising for tests and um, sessions or um, sort of visits and things that are going on. Coaches are, oh, YouTube I've put there because we upload our videos to YouTube, so it's really useful if the learners have got YouTube as an app on their devices so they can view them more easily. Coaches Eye and Coach My Video are the two video analysis apps. So the Coach My Video is the one that I, I showed you initially. Coaches Eye, uh, oh, the Coach My Video you'll see only works on iOS devices at the moment, whereas Coaches Eye works on iOS and Android. So sometimes when you choose the technology, it's not always going to work on every device. And what we're trying to do now is move more to the point where things do work regardless of the platform that you're using. And then Sketch and Explain Everything are two more of the annotation tools that you can use. Uh, but they don't play back videos that you've produced. They let you annotate and create videos of annotations. And then also linked to assessment um, for learning, we've got these two apps, Nearpod, which I, I talked about previously, and Socrative, which is similar. But with Socrative, you type in a room number very sim in a similar way that we did to Kahoot, and then you can set different types of activities within there. Um, in relation to ease of access, and this is what we're going to come and have a look at in a moment, we've used two things mainly. Um, QR code reader, which is free to download, works on everything. And then Erasmus, which only works on Apple and Google Play. And I've got some interactive posters um, that I can show you. I'm going to have a go over in a minute. Um, Oops. So um, all, there's two different sorts I've brought along. I've got some that work with Erasmus, which will have the little purple um, symbol there. And if you, what you'll need to do, if you've got Erasmus on your device already, I think we've done it on the ones that we've brought along with us, you'll have to follow the College Cambria channel. But give me a shout and I can help you do that. And with that, if I hover over here, it just takes me straight off and plays the video clip straight away without me having to do anything else. It sort of brings it to life. Um, 
And then for the QR codes, I've got the example that I showed you before with the QR code at the side there for video links. But also this one here is an example. In fact, what I'll do, if I just escape out of there for a moment. So you can just down here. In your resource packs that you've got, you'll see you have one of these. So, um, I, got say, packs. I haven't put them into your packs, but we have soft copies of them, and we have here, and I've got a few copies at the top of the room. So. Yeah. So, so, what you've got is some video case studies, links there, um, of things that we've been, been doing in college, and the PowerPoint presentation will be there, um, but also the handout examples. So, some of them use Erasmus, and you need to follow the College Cambria channel, some of them use a QR code reader. Um, in the, you'll have this overview document and then underneath each of the little thumbnails is a numbered document and they're also in the pack so you've got electronic copies of these that you can download if you want to or just refer to afterwards. So these are the general apps and um, you've got the vodcasts one and the feedback to learn as one and then also some examples of the different types of posters that we use for QR codes. So initially, it was just to give, make it easier to access certain resources. So learners were struggling on small devices to type in the address to get to our um, ATEB app, which is atebmobile.cambria.ac.uk. It was really fiddly. So we thought, right, let's just make some QR code posters to give them access to things like ATEB, um, Moodle, BKSB. And then we started to link in more curriculum-related um, sites down there as well. So these two posters are just to websites. This one down here is the video one that we, we talked about before, and this is the first one we did for the sous chefs. And then these are augmented reality posters. So this one here will just do one thing. If you hover over a picture, it plays the video clip. The one over here is slightly more interactive. So if I hover over this F46 there, it will bring up a couple of options for me. Do I want to look at a case study or the product information? for that particular tool. So that's where I think augmented reality becomes more interesting when you can offer um, a differentiated experience to the learners when they hover over an item. I can show you that. And then these just go to exercises on YouTube. Um, these are ones that the, the tutors want the learners to access rather than saying go on YouTube and um, look up how to do a push-up. They can say right this is the way that I want you to learn to, to do push-ups. And this is one of the periodic table. So it either takes you a video or a website for each of the elements within there. Um, and then there's just an example of the video analysis and some more resources for you at the end. So while we're having a go at these, I'll bring some of the resources around the table. Are we okay for a couple more minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Um, I'll just pop my. Oops. Do you want to take a few questions? Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, there. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed a few questions come up on the board, mm -hmm. but if anybody else on the board has questions, just, just to shout out. Um, are going from books costly to provide? They're about £200 each. £200, so a lot cheaper than my class. Yeah, a lot cheaper. Um, what did you use to sync iPads? Um, it was to sync iPod touches, and I can't remember, but I can find out for you. So if you leave me your email address, I can get hold of the person. But that was about three years ago now, and I think our preferred method would be to put the resource, the video, up onto the web somewhere, so either in Google Drive or Google Plus for the learners to access that way because if you're syncing it on to say 16 devices, you've only got access to it while it's on those devices, they quickly become full. So it was how we started to share um, videos and things, but it's not really the way we do it so much now. But I can find out if you are still interested and in that. How do you staff manage the learning curve associated with all of these tools? support for a minute. Um, it, what we tend to do, seriously, is go into sessions and help staff. So when they start to use a particular technology, if they're not confident in doing that themselves, which a lot of them aren't, the first time they use it, one of us in, in the team will try and go into the session with them and just be another person and support there. But what we're tending to find more now is that the learners are starting to sort of take a little bit of ownership of helping as well. So in some classes we've got at least one or two learners who are really confident in using technology and it's getting the staff to recognise that they shouldn't see that as a threat, they should embrace it and work with that learner and, and sort of looking at different tools that they can use and that's where I think it, it's sort of most effective because if you've only got say three or four members of staff who can support the use of technology within an organisation, you, know, you, you can't support everybody to the same level so I think we'll definitely be encouraging more of these sort of digital leaders. Um, in learning, <coughs> excuse me, in learning groups, but looking at it as you know, we're all learning about using the technology together because it doesn't—it's it's constantly changing, isn't it? So 
So that's where I think it's worked best for us. Does anyone have anything?